So today, I have a special guest who's going to tell you one of his road stories. Damon Johnson, lead guitar player and one of the create, most creative elements in Black Star Rider, is going to tell you the story. Before I, I turn it over to Damon, I thought I'd just tell you a little bit about the whole dynamic within Black Star Riders. If I were to characterize the personalities in the band, I've often described Ricky Warwick as the heart of this band. And Damon Johnson as the soul. Ricky's the one who drives this machine, and Damon is the one who just takes it to the next level. Both extremely talented men, and it's an amazing, amazing chemistry that they have between each other. The two Black Star Riders albums are evidence of that, and the Killer Instinct has really shown how this has gone further. But being on the road with these guys, it's it's unlike many other bands that I've ever worked with. These guys truly, truly are a family. Even on days off, a lot of other bands, you know, they all try to stay away from each other or whatever. Not these guys. These guys hang out. They go to dinners together. Everybody really gets along. This is this is a very wonderful place to be a part of. And um, we all have our roots. And Damon's going to tell you a little story about something that happened to him when he was younger that I think you're going to love. So yeah, I was, um, I want to say this was around, wow man, this is the late 80s, let's just say, probably around 87, 88 maybe. I had driven from Birmingham up to Nashville to see the great Texas guitarist Eric Johnson play, um, who I had just recently become a big fan of. My friend and I drove up there, and uh, Eric played at this venue in Nashville called The Exit Inn. So we watched the show, it was amazing. I'm getting ready to leave, so I come out in the front of the venue, I go in to use the bathroom, and as I'm coming out, Billy Gibbons walks past me. Yeah, the Billy Gibbons. And I walked over to my friend, and I was like, did you see that? And he goes, yeah, that's Gibbons, man, he's here. And, and we both have this panic look on our face, like, what are we gonna do? And I said, man, I have to talk to him, there's no way I'm gonna not talk to Billy Gibbons. One of my heroes, man, legend. So I'm stalking him, you know, I'm waiting around outside the bathroom. So Billy's coming out of the bathroom. He's got on this cool hat, his sunglasses, full rock star, you know. And uh, I'm walking towards him. And I got my my hand out, you know, like, Mr. Gibbons, my, my name's Damon, and I play a Les Paul too, just totally nerding out. And the expression on his face is he's like this, he's just smiling and nodding. And as I'm spilling my life story to him, he's reaching inside of his jacket pocket. He's going like this. And I'm going, you're my influence and Trey Sombrae's changed my life and Rio Grande mud and, you know. So as I get closer, he reaches out and shakes my hand. Then he reaches and he pulls out one of these little pens you know, the pin that has the ZZ logo, like on the side of the car. And when I finish spewing my garbage, he goes, here's a little something for your lapel, Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I was stunned, like I was frozen in time and I'm just holding it. I was, and he just walks off like a phantom. He disappears into the night. And my buddy is standing there, he goes, he did not just say that. And I said, yeah, he did say that. I have that pen to this day. I will never relinquish it. Uh, I've asked my wife to put it in my casket, actually, when I, when I pass away. So I've shared that story with uh, friends through the years, and it's one of my favorite road stories of all time. So it's, it's almost become this sound bite, you know. Here's a little something for your lapel, Holmes. Um, I think I told Robbie Crane that story as soon as he joined the band. So, uh, anyway, there it is. <laughs> the day I met Billy Gibbons.